Back in 1967, Colonel Lee Ellis was an Air Force fighter pilot whose plane was shot down over Vietnam, held as a prisoner of war for over five years at the Hanoi Hilton in some cases. He says the principles of leadership he experienced during that difficult time helped him to not only survive the experience, but made him a better leader. And he's written about those life lessons in a brand new book called Leading with Honor, Leadership, Lessons from the Hanoi Hilton. And the Colonel joins us live. Good morning to you. Steve, good to be with you. And 40 years ago, I could have never imagined being here, let alone the fact that those lessons would be so relevant today. Yeah, in fact, let, let's talk a little bit about the, your circumstances. You, because I, I'd read in your book that uh, you were at times uh, incarcerated right next door to uh, the next cell over was John McCain. You were with him at the Hanoi Hilton for a while, but re what really helped you, you said, were, was the leadership structure inside the POW camp. Absolutely, we always had a senior ranking officer. That's the military way, so we would check date of rank, identify the senior ranking officer, and that person had to lead in some very difficult circumstances. No kidding. Uh, it, it had to be bleak, and yet you say that uh, some of the, one of the leaders was optimistic, the other was a little... Stoic. Stoic. Stoic would be a good way to put it. I would say he was optimistic, but, but not near so much as the other, and so there was a little bit of a tension there. But on the other hand, we needed both. We had to believe that someday we were going to walk out of there, and at the same time, we had to the Stockdale paradox confront the brutal realities of where we were. Well, let's uh, talk, Colonel, a little bit about some of the lessons you learned inside that are applicable to sure. all of us. First of all, you got to know yourself. Yes, I think that's fundamental. And for me, I knew my passion was flying and aviation. I knew my purpose as a military person. I knew my personality. I'm an adventurous, take charge person. Uh, it was a great time for self-reflection. As a leadership coach, any leadership development always starts with self-awareness. Sure. So you have to know yourself. And speaking of yourself, you've got personal uh, goals and standards and morals, and you've got to guard your character. Guard your character is so important. We can all assume we have good character, but the reality is that temptations come. So we have to refresh ourselves on what our commitments really are. And then we need that support team around us that can help us and remind us of what we're committed to and hold us accountable. When you're sitting in the Hanoi Hilton, you have a lot of fears, but you say confront your doubts and fears as well. And that's one of the most important things to you. Yes, it is. Fear will take you out. Just look at Penn State. That was all about fear. The problems there with the administration, they were afraid of what might happen if they did the right thing. I say lean into the pain of your fear to do what you know is right. Do your duty. Be responsible. Whatever your duty is, go do it, regardless of your fears. Sometimes bad things happen to good people, and you've got to be resilient. You've got to be able to bounce back. Bouncing back is so important, and we hear that, and we see it every day. We saw it just with one of our senators, I think it was from Illinois, that had bounced back and was walking, Kirk, up, yes. walking up the steps of the Capitol. I think you, you realize that what you're committed to and what you want to be, you get a plan, he had a plan, you set your goals and you just start walking your way back into uh, where you need to be and bouncing back. And the POW MIA uh, wives and families really had to bounce back. You know, we had it tough, but we knew we were okay. Sure. They didn't know about us and they had to organize and that support team really helped them. Well, it's, uh, it's really good advice uh, coming from somebody who lived it for five and a half years. Colonel, we thank you very much for joining thank us you, live Steve. today. Thank you, Steve. Nice right. to be with you. And thank you very much for your service. Thank you.